Are you ready to learn about the latest and greatest in how you can manage your Salesforce deployments? I'm Leanne Rimel, and this is Expert Corner, where I sit down with Salesforce product experts to learn more about features and products that matter to you, the Salesforce admin. Before we go any further, I'd like to share our forward-looking statement. This is asking that you make all purchasing decisions based on currently available technology. Today, we're going to be sitting down with Karen Fidelic, product manager here at Salesforce. She's going to be sharing some of these latest and greatest features and enhancements for you, the Salesforce admin, to help you deploy changes. Let's go meet Karen. Hi, Karen. Thanks so much for joining us here today. Hey, Liam. So good to be here. Well, we're really excited to have you on to meet all of our awesome admins and to share some of the exciting things that you've been working on for our admin community. But first, I want to make sure everyone who's watching knows you, knows who you are and what you're working on. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah. So uh, my name is Karen Fidelic and I'm a product manager here at Salesforce. I work in our platform group on what we call our developer services team. So we're focused on develop on building developer experience tools, so tools and products um, to make the developer and admin experience better when building on the Salesforce platform. I've been here at Salesforce for about the last five years, working in the same basic realm for that time uh, for the last two and a half years, I've been working specifically in this DevOps space, um, building this product called DevOps Center. Um, so that's been a really fun period of time. We've built this from the ground up and it's been a really fun project. Um, I work out of Colorado. So we have an office um, in Denver now. I work primarily out of my home here, but outside of Boulder in Denver. Um, so really happy to be here today. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining us. And I actually didn't realize that you were outside of Boulder. So we have a little bit of that in common. I'm actually in Montana. So we're both zooming in from our, our mountain town. Time zone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mountain. I used to, I was told actually when I first moved here that it was Montana time zone. And I believe <laughs> that for like a brief period of time, but it's not it's mountain yep, time yep. zone. Yep. Um, so Thanks for introducing yourself. Um, you mentioned, you know, some things you're working on or the group that you're working with at Salesforce. Can you dive in a little deeper and tell us what are you working on right now? Or what have you been working on lately um, with the impact for admins? Yeah, yeah. So we're building this product called DevOps Center, um, which is really exciting. We're very excited about it. There's a really big demand that we're seeing in the community um, for this product. And um, basically, it's a improvement to the change and release management process for anybody building on the Salesforce platform. And specifically, it really is targeted at the admin kind of persona. So it's a declarative click-based interface to manage change and release. Um, we also view this as a, an updated replacement alternative to change sets. Um, so this is really all about managing your work, your changes, um, tracking changes through your life cycle, having an easy way to deploy those changes um, through your different stages of, of your life cycle pipeline. Um, so like I said, there's really a lot of pent up demand for this and we're, we're really excited about it. That's really exciting. I know you and I were chatting previously and this has been something that's always been so important to admins. I remember when I first became an admin, uh, I would have to manage my sandbox builds and, and deploy them to production using private package listing. So private package links, like, so imagine you were going to create an app exchange listing. And um, that was really the process many years ago. And, you know, change sets allowed us to grow quite a bit in what we could do and connecting our orgs and moving changes. But I know, like you said, there's been a lot of demand out there and a lot of interest to expand what you can do with change sets or do with any sort of change management. And then also what you can track. So I'm really excited about this implication of this for admins because we just have so many admins that are doing a lot of creative, innovative builds in their sandbox and they we want to make it as seamless as possible for them to get those into production. Yeah. Yeah. We think this is really an improved like experience, the actual interface, um, the UI. We hear a lot about the sort of um just the the non-user friendliness of the change set UI. So that's sort of, you know, one very easy to grasp feature here, but we're also really bringing in a lot more modern best practices to this flow. So I know a lot of admins really want to adopt more of the modern best practices that we have around, around DevOps. Um, some of those things that we've been introducing over the years with our Salesforce DX suite, um, 
things like source control that, you know, what we, we understand is good practice, but not everybody's familiar with it. Not everybody knows, how, you know, how to get started with using a source control system. And that's a really big part of what we're trying to do here is make it super simple, um, really completely behind the scenes. You really don't even need to think about it um, and, and really understand the source control system, but it's all baked into the experience in a really, really easy to use way. So I think people are excited about that. What is some of the, you know, admins have been getting hands-on with this now. They've been using it. You've been communicating with them and getting feedback. What are some of the main, uh, you know, use cases and feedback that you've been getting for DevOps Center where people are really finding a lot of improvements to their process? Yeah. With this? yeah. So we've had a, a pilot and a closed beta running for the last, over over the past year. Um and we have been getting a lot of positive feedback from this. Some of the key things that people really like, um, we have a new capability that allows the changes that you're making in your sandboxes to be tracked automatically. And this is built upon the same technology that we use through our CLI, which we call source tracking. As you're making changes, they're being tracked automatically. And it's a really big convenience, powerful feature. Um, it means you don't have to keep track manually of the changes that you're making. And this is one of the things that we hear the most that people just love about the product. Um, so that's one. The other thing that is really made easy is there's a visual pipeline um, where you can just see the stages of your life cycle from development through testing and into production. Um, you can see that completely visually. And through clicks, you can deploy those changes, deploy your changes from one stage to the next. So just the ease of that is something that people are also finding really, really nice. Um, and then I'd say the third thing is that integration with source control, just the seamlessness of it, um, the ability to use source control. And one of the key use cases with that is some of these teams um, have parts of their team that have already adopted source control. They've already adopted some of these SFDX capabilities. Um, and one of the challenges has been, you know, the admins who may not be as familiar with that and are using change sets have not been able to get really onto those processes that mm -hmm. the rest of the team is using. And so they've kind of got this very disjoint setup where you've got some developers who are working through the CLI, pushing their changes into a source control repository, which they're managing as their source of truth, which is awesome. And then we have our admins who are making changes in sandboxes and deploying them using change sets. And unfortunately, those changes are not making their way back into the source control system because there's just not a good way today to do that. Uh, we don't have an interface from change sets into the source control system. So they're having to kind of live in these two separate worlds. Um, and that's one of the huge benefits of DevOps Center is now it's all one big system. So those admins can now go through a UI-based experience with clicks, get those changes that they're making into the same source control system that the, the pro developers may, may be already using and get everything into one consistent and um, unified source of truth. So that's a huge benefit that teams see, not just admins, but the rest of the team as well, because now everybody can be operating against the same project, the same source of truth, the same processes, but using the tools that they want. Well, so this sounds awesome. Can you show us a demo? I can. All right, so here we are in DevOps Center. DevOps Center is a managed package that will be installed into your production org. When you have it installed, you'll be able to just access it from our app launcher. Um, what you're looking at here, this is a work item. And one of the key premises of DevOps Center is that we have um, uh, an object that we call a work item, which is the, the kind of the key uh, foundational object that is where the requirement is managed. It's also where the changes that go with that requirement are tracked throughout the entire life cycle. So that's a new concept that we're introducing, and it's a way to manage the work. So if you think about this as like a user story or a bug um, or a ticket, we've now incorporated that into the standard process here. So this one right here is just called demo new object. And so the, re the requirement for the story here is we're just going to create a new custom object, and I'm going to show you how that goes through the entire flow. So we've already got this work item created. The work item is connected to a development environment, which is a sandbox. And so you can see that link here. And from this work item, I can simply click on this link that opens our sandbox. And then we'll come in here and we can just make our changes like we would normally do that. We'll go into setup. And for this demo, I'm just gonna really create a simple custom object.
And we could make whatever changes we want here. And once we're done with our changes, we're gonna go back into DevOps Center. And now I'm gonna uh, demonstrate that source tracking or change tracking feature that I mentioned earlier. So after I've made those changes in the sandbox, I'm just gonna click this pull changes button here. And this is now gonna go look at that sandbox, identify the changes that I've made and, I, and pull them down and display them here. So now you can see I've got a custom object and a layout. And those are the two files that were changed with that with that new object that I just made. Um, we also have the ability to see here a few custom or a few profiles that were also changed with that custom object that I made. But these are being ignored um, because they're actually called out in our force ignore file. And this is a file that can be used with an SFDX project behind the scenes if you want to ignore any files from being pulled or pushed into our, our orgs that we're working with. This is a feature that's a uh, capability of SFDX that now we're able to take advantage of within DevOps Center as well. So just to illustrate that the profiles did change, but we're actually ignoring them as part of this change management process now. Uh, so we've got our files here now. We didn't have to keep track of those manually. Uh, we can see them and we're just gonna now be able to select them to move them forward in our process. So to do this, we're just gonna give it a simple little comment and click this commit changes button. And this is gonna now go out to that sandbox, pull the metadata components out and push them into this feature branch that was created in our source control repository for this specific work item. So again, I mentioned earlier, this whole thing that you know source control is baked into this experience, but it's all behind the scenes. This branch that you see here was created automatically for us when the work item was started. Uh, we didn't have to worry about creating it. We don't have to worry about actually doing anything with it. It's pushing the metadata directly into that feature branch. And you can see the status that's happening right here. Um, when this is complete, we can see a notice that the commit has been completed successfully. Um, and now we've got those files in our source control system. I can show you that just so you can see how, yes, we had a push to our GitHub source control repository here. Um, so you can see how easily that was done. But in fact, you don't actually have to even go there if you don't want. Um, I show you just to, again, show you that it all happened behind the scenes. So this is that seamless integration with source control that we think is really, really powerful. Um, so at this point, we've got those changes pushed into our source control system. We'll go through the next step here now, which is to create a review. Um, this is a process you can go through to facilitate a peer review on your team. It's going to create a pull request in GitHub that you could go review, collaborate on there. Um, and then once you're ready and feeling good about those changes, we're going to then simply click this toggle that says ready to promote. And this is now going to indicate that this work item is ready to move through our pipeline um, into the next stage. So to demonstrate that, we'll go into our pipeline view here. Um, and this is a configurable pipeline that was set up for us, um, was set up when the project was created. You can have any number of stages here. What we're showing here is a set of stages, including development environments where we're doing um, that development work. So what we're seeing here is a set of stages, including a development environment where we're doing our development work like we just saw in that sandbox. We then have three test stages, integration, UAT, and staging, and then finally a production stage. Um, again, this is all configurable. We have um, each stage is corresponding to an org. In these cases, these are sandboxes um, or scratch orgs and a branch in the source control repository. So now when we want to move our change through this pipeline, it's a simple click, some, click of a button. So we select that object um, work item that we just created and we click Promote Selected. And this is going to go through a process that we call promotion, which includes the deployment. So we see here a set of options that are basically our deployment options. This should look similar to you if you're using change sets. Um, we have some Apex test options. We also have the ability here to control whether we want to move all of our changes in our, in our target branch or just the changes that we just made. So this is really a nice performance um, benefit to only deploy the changes that you actually need to. We'll go ahead and click promote. And now it's going to orchestrate behind the scenes here, the movement of this metadata into our integration stage. What's happening here is it's moving, it's merging the feature branch for this work item 
into our integration branch in the source control system. And then it's deploying from that integration branch into the integration org. So that might sound like a lot of stuff, um, but it's super simple. And that's kind of the point. It's all being orchestrated for us behind the scenes by DevOps Center. And all you got to do is click a button um, and those changes are now going to end up in your integration org where you can continue doing testing um, and then move it through the rest of the pipeline using a similar process. Um, so again, you know, highlighting these features of change tracking, uh, seamless integration with GitHub, and really easy click-based deployments through this lifecycle pipeline. Well, this looks awesome, Karen. I appreciate the demo. And, you know, I think admins are going to be just so excited to get hands-on with this. I know everyone is building a lot of great tools and solutions in their sandboxes, and this is going to make their deployment a lot more transparent, a lot more well-organized, a lot more seamless. How do admins get hands-on with it? Like, what is the next step? If an admin is watching this right now and they're like, this looks awesome, don't want to use change sets anymore. What is their next step to get hands-on with this and start using it? So it's really exciting. We just recently released our, what we're calling an open beta. And this means that it's available to anybody now. Um, so if you go into your setup menu uh, in, in a production org, um, you should now see a new page and setup called DevOps Center. So if you just search for DevOps Center, you should find this. Um, that page will give you the ability to enable and install the package for DevOps Center. And then you can just start using it. We've got a full set of documentation out in our help. Uh, that you can find. I would also encourage you to go to our Trailblazer community group, which is our DevOps Center Trailblazer community group. Um, we have a lot of resources there, including some video demos that go through similar to kind of what I just went through a little bit more in depth, um, highlighting some more of the capabilities that we just introduced in this open beta. Um, and so you can review those and then just start using it um, and start playing with it. And we'd love to hear your feedback. So please engage in that Trailblazer community group with us. Let us know what you'd like, uh, what you don't like, what you would like to see coming in the future. Um, and we have a really active community out there that's already been quite engaged with what we're doing. This is so meaningful and important for all of our admins out there. Thanks for joining us, Karen. Thank you so much for having me. That was awesome. I am so excited for Salesforce admins to be able to get hands on with this feature, seamlessly manage their deployments, and partner even more effectively with their partners all across developer and IT groups. This is going to mean a lot for Salesforce admins that are managing any sorts of changes or sandbox deployments. I can't wait for you to get hands on. All of this link that Karen mentioned will be included in the show notes on admin.salesforce.com. And make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you never miss a video like this. We will see you next time.